Hi, very good morning to all. And uh, I'm Danushi Pereira. Today we are going to start our fifth webinar of this webinar series, a name of Understanding People, the Learning to Analyze Personalities to Become Successful in Hospitality Industry. I would cordially, uh, sorry, I would like to welcome Dr. Chandi Jayavardhana, a tourism educator, consultant, researcher, author, and hotelier. And uh, through 20 books and academic journals, themed issues, over 100 articles, Dr. Chandi Jayavardhana has influenced a generational, generation of doctoral, masters, and undergraduate hospitality and tourism management students all around the world. So we, have, we, are, uh, we are warmly welcome you to this session, sir. And I would like to thank Professor D.A.C. Suranga Silva, the founding coordinator, Master in Tourism, Economics and Hotel Management, University of Colombo, to giving us the greatest opportunity to have a discussion with you. So as, a, uh, as, already, as you guys are already aware, we are going to uh, have su three sub-sessions under this session. First, the student answering, and second, the PowerPoint presentation, and lastly, the uh, quick discussion. So I would like to income Dr. Chandi to carry out this uh, session. Dr. Chandi, please. Okay, Danushi, thank you very much. You are a good moderator. Uh, so good morning to everybody. And uh, the what I want to say is, uh, I want to first thank uh, three people. I want to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Suranga uh, for inviting me. Uh, I've been doing guest lectures over the last eight or nine years at the University of uh, Colombo, but this is the first time I did a sort of a small module. Uh, and I like to thank Gaia uh, for coordinating this uh, module and, uh, and Danushi uh, for being the moderator today. So as you know, today is the fifth and the last uh, webinar. Uh, and I want to sort of tie things that we have been discussing in the last four today looking at the people element, but people, pleasing people is the business that we are in. And we have to work with a lot of people to ensure that we uh, satisfy our customers. So uh, this is to me the most important one. Uh, and also it's a, it's a type of a concept that I've been thinking for since I think 1973, but I formally learned it in France actually in 1988. Since 1989, I have actually uh, lectured this face-to-face -face as seminars in 15 countries uh, in different formats. Sometimes it has been a sort of a five-day uh, seminar, uh, and then two days, or sometimes it's one day, two days, then half a day. This is very short. It's a little over uh, one and a half hours. But I'll give you the essence of the concept, and it has certainly helped in my career. Uh, moving from country to country. It's a concept that has helped me and I want to share everything uh, with you. Uh, I sent you an email about an hour ago. Uh, my, I write this weekly column to Ireland, but I don't know how many of you uh, read real newspapers now. Uh, there's an e-newspaper as well. And I, uh, when I get the link from the editor of uh, Sunday Island, uh, I actually post it on Twitter and LinkedIn, a couple of Facebook groups. And I email it to uh, some of my friends who are not socially uh, involved in the social media. So I send about, I think, three groups of emails to about another 150 people. And I get a lot of input. I am quite enjoying it because it's not academic writing, it's actually my life story. And it will come as a, as a series of books starting from the uh, end of this year. Uh, they are called confessions. So I send you today's one. I read it. It's nothing to do with this course, but it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, uh, today's one is very important. It, it talks about um, as uh, someone growing up in Sri Lanka. I never been out of Sri Lanka, and at the age twenty five, I get opportunity. But I open many doors, which has helped me in my career for next twenty five years. So I think it's a good case study. Uh, I think you should read it. And also what I want to tell you is in case you like to, if you don't get the island, you like to read it. I think I'll be writing it for another one and a half years. I have so many stories to tell. Uh, if you send me an email individually, 
saying, include me in your email list. I will do that for you. I will put you in one of my email groups. And when I send it, no one knows it's a blind copied uh, group email I sent. So I write to myself and I put uh, everybody as a blind, uh, uh, blind carbon copy uh, group. So if you're interested, let me know. Send me one email saying include me and I will do that from next Sunday. Uh, what I, with that, we will now start the uh, question answer session very quickly. You know the drill is one minute per person. You can take maximum two minutes. I have exempted three people from it uh, because they wrote at length on the Facebook group. Uh, that is Teva, Anushka, and Major. So they, three of them have got marks. They don't have to uh, do, I won't call them for this session. Uh, they can listen to the others. Uh, all right, so we can stop the recording now and I'm going to start. Uh, and you know the drill, I will mention the name of the student and the number of the question and your job is to read the question and give the answer, all that within one or two minutes. All right, so stop the recording now. Right, so thank you very much for those answers. Uh, it's uh, very good. Uh, sometimes don't be scared to give your own opinion because you are in a master's program. Uh, we don't have to always agree because I'm a very opinionated person that is uh, shaped from my personality, my experience and my generation. So you guys can disagree. That's not a problem. So we should have that intellectual uh, debate which enriches uh, the graduate studies in universities particularly. A uh, couple of comments on what you said. Uh, uh, the first question, I just want to, uh, not to criticize, but just to uh, enhance that answer uh, or just to uh, explain something. Often we as human beings, I'm not a psychologist, but this particular module actually touches industrial psychology uh, somewhat. Uh, and I've thought about it for nearly 40 years, uh, nearly 50 years actually and lectured on it since 1989. So uh, my knowledge on psychology is very small, but I think this particular concept, I know it works. It has at least worked for, work for me. Uh, so one thing I, I have learned from experience is that we normally as human beings, when you say my favorite teacher was this gentleman who guided me and all that, your personality is normally similar to the person you like. That's one thing I've learned. We normally do not like people who are in the opposite boxes. I will show that in the slide presentation. Although when you are getting married, sometimes people say, oh, opposites attract, it's good. But if you get married to someone who has a total opposite personality, living with that person, sharing the life for hopefully 50 years or whatever, uh, that will be very challenging because uh, uh, people, how to at least, when you get married, you have to get married, not exactly someone just like you, but someone who's closer to your personality to have a successful marriage. That's my, uh, my, uh, my take on that. So when you talk about a teacher, obviously your personality is similar to that person. Uh, often when I teach this in a long five day seminar, we do detailed uh, work, uh, we have a workbook, uh, Sometimes some students find it difficult to analyze personality. So I say, think of yourself. First analyze your own personality. Then think of people you don't like. Sometimes we don't like people, not that they have done anything wrong to you, but that's a clash of personalities. That person's uh, behavior, practices, the way they talk, uh, too loud or whatever doesn't uh, align with what I like. So that normally that uh, someone personality like that is in the opposite box. So sometimes in life you have to work with all types of people, but we try to have, have minimum communication dealings with people we don't like. That's the normal nature. I, I direct bridge games. I mean, in a normal week now, I direct uh, three or four games. So that takes about three hours at a time. And sometimes there are 80 players, uh, usually older people, and this personality analysis is very important to me. So I know the players who always complain, 
uh, people and there are 94 laws that govern this game. So as a director and a uh, teacher, I should know most of the laws. Uh, so when I'm called, I'm like a referee. I'm called and then they complain and say this so-and-so did this. So knowing their personalities help me to give the correct judgment and diffuse the tension at a table. The bridge becomes a very competitive uh, game. So what I'm going to tell you here is the personality analysis, not only your professional life, it helps in sports, games, in family life. You know, so it's a quite a wide uh, sort of a subject. Uh, the, uh, the lady who answered about Mr. Sudhana Rodrigo, he was one of my boss, uh, he was my fourth, the fifth boss, a fourth boss uh, in my long career. Now, someone like him, he's a good man, but he is wired differently. He's a bit clumsy, he dresses. So you don't, when you when that person is your boss, you don't try to organize that per boss. You say, boss, you are late again. No, that means you will you'll get fired. You have to go with the flow. Not that you are changing your personality. You are communicating, you are adjusting the way you deal with that person because that person is important to me. Actually, for one month, I will come in. So I try to be not less organized, but I don't try to interfere in his style. I go, try to go with that. So it's a very subtle changes you make. Now, Garmini Fonseca, I don't know whether you have, any of you have seen his movies. If not, you should see some of his movies. He was the greatest actor our country has ever produced. Uh, uh, he died fairly young. Uh, you should see his work. He's an amazing guy. When I met him, and I first met him when I was 10 years old, we both acted in uh, Lester James Pierce's Gum Perilia, probably the greatest single movie ever made. Uh, and then I met him uh, 10 years later, 10 or so, uh, 10 years later at Barbara in Brief. Uh, then as an adult, I was the most impressed. He's one of the most intelligent people I ever met. A lot of people said, oh, he's this actor, but he's very smart and you know he was equally fluent in three languages. So when you meet someone, make some quick observations. You don't have a whole day to analyze people and, and may take a book and but for where he shook hands, where he looked at my eyes when he spoke with me, the way he uh, spoke and uh, the mannerism, you know, it helped me to analyze him. But he was a very difficult personality to analyze because he was so complex. He had different facets in his personality. A lot of people thought he's very arrogant, but I actually liked him. I thought he was very intelligent. And we had, of course, some common topics that we were able to talk. Uh, then uh, I also want to comment about uh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, it didn't come as a question, but I just remembered it. Uh, when I arrived in Jamaica, I was uh, I studied marketing before that in England, and uh, so I'm a graduate of the Chartered Institute of Marketing in UK. So I had this interest in marketing and sales and PR. I started going with the sales managers to do sales calls. And then I started observing them. And I was able to go with all 15 ladies over three week period. So every day, three sales calls. And I used that to observe them, their sales tactics, strategies. You know, they are like my soldiers. And I found a lot of useful things during my first three weeks in that country uh, because they took me to, to their uh, customers and for example, one girl, one lady, uh, we went to see the chairman of uh, chief executive office of uh, Air Jamaica. Air Jamaica is a national carrier of Jamaica. And that gentleman came from Ireland. So I, when we entered the office, I quickly realized that he was a very fun loving guy. He had a sort of a softy personality uh, and he will joke a little bit. And I immediately changed my style of communication only for that sales call because I knew he's a fun loving guy. And we sat there for 30 minutes and kept on telling each other Irish jokes because the English people always put Irish people down in their jokes. So I told, and he will tell me one, the sales manager was so nervous. I'm dealing with the chief executive of the airline, but I knew that works for him. 
And then the same girl took me to meet a bank uh, uh, chief executive of uh, one of the two main banks in uh, Jam uh, Kingston, Jamaica. And that office, when I entered the office, I realized that person is a very formal, he had a formal personality. He had a sort of a perfect type of personality. Everything was prim and proper in the office. So all these observations I made in two minutes. Enter office, secretary looked very formal. Everything, you know, everything has a place in the office. I didn't joke there. So the salesman said, oh, Mr. Chandi, you are totally different dealing with that person. I said, yeah, he's a different animal. He will not like if I tell him jokes. He had to be very formal. You know, and then in Jamaica, sometimes you get late. And he was annoyed that if you were one minute late, so you change immediately. Got to the message. So what I'm trying to say is, it's a very practical thing. You very quickly read people or look at the way they are polish their shoes, uh, the, the the way the person wore the sari, uh, person the, the how the smile, and you change, adjust the message. And another sales girl from Jamaica kept on telling this uh, one of the clients about our new banquet facility. So they those days old fashioned, you have a tent card like this, you keep on folding the tent and show the pictures in all before social media. And that person told one thing, the customer told that uh, girl and me, I am not interested in banquet business because we have our own conference rooms in the heart of Kingston, the capital city. Uh, the girl didn't stop the, uh, the percentage. She continued showing more, we have a new uh, private dining room, sir. Uh, and then that person, I can see the person was getting annoyed with us. We would have killed the business with that. So in the car, I asked the girl, why did you continue with the presentation? She said, well, that's what we're supposed to do, Mrs. Jaitandi. They see they're trained to do the whole presentation. I said, no, you listen to the customer. He did not want banqueting. Stop the, the talking about the banqueting. Talk how great our bedrooms are, you know? So you have to be quick in changing the uh, uh, communication. You are not uh, order taker in McDonald's counter. You are doing something a uh, little different, right? So that's the essence of this concept, the adjustment of the way you communicate. You can't change your personality to suit every Tom, Dick and Harry, right? Um, so those are some of the things that may help you. And then the key is how quickly you analyze another person and adjust the way you communicate with that person. So with that, let's start our PowerPoint presentation. Uh, let me share the screen. Do you all see the slides? Yes, sir. Okay, and my uh, voice is not too loud, not too soft. Perfect. Perfect. So oh, you get extra marks for that coming. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So let's uh, let's start. Let me put shift these guys here. Okay. So today is the last one. Uh, I'm sad to leave you, and I first must apologize. I've been very uh, pushy with you. That I did purposely because sometimes. Uh, the lethargy sets in when you are in a pandemic, you know, pandemic, everything going wrong and there's a stupid war happening and we, Sri Lanka has all these political problems, corrupt politicians, all that. And, you know, we get depressed and lethargy sets in. But you are in a master's program. So I purposely push you for your own good. I want you to listen, read and pick the is relevant to you and use it for your success in your career. That's my objective. So that's why I apologize for pushing you too much, but that was done purposely. Uh, and I know like, you know, in Sri Lanka, I know we have the, you know, I'm Sri Lankan, you know, uh, the, the transport system is not very good, the roads and now particularly has all the problems. But if we delay things just because few people didn't come and then wait for them, and then we will not never be able to manage the time. So that's why we were very strict. So fifth one, the last uh, is understanding people. Last night, I did something very meaningful. I, I run uh, webinars, or I moderate webinars uh, for two organizations that uh, I set up, volunteer organizations. I, I give uh, my time free. All the people in that, uh, those two organizations work free, including uh, Samanthi, who's here from uh, the University of West Indies. Uh, yesterday, we had one of the webinars. 
What we do is we look at, it's, it was done by the Global Hospitality Forum. Uh, we look at some senior people who have made distinguished contributions to our industry over a 50 year period. So we, these are all sort of people who have retired. Uh, I mean, I have 50 years experience, but I'm not retired yet. I still work, but most people, you know, they, after about 40 years of work, they normally retire. Uh, so we bring those people and just to inspire the younger generation, it's an interview. I am the moderator. I ask the questions. I do a PowerPoint presentation. Yesterday, I uh, moderated a webinar uh, of a person that I really like. Why I like him, I was started thinking about it. He has similar personality like me, and I've always liked him. He was my boss uh, about 40, 45 years ago. So I want to share what happened was, uh, his name is Malin Hapuwada. To me, he's the greatest hotelier Sri Lanka has produced. Uh, he's a true Sri Lankan uh, hotelier. He never, he went out of Sri Lanka only for one year uh, to be trained uh, at my former university, uh, Ryerson University in Toronto, in Canada. He got a scholarship. But rest of the 47 years of his career, he worked in Sri Lanka. He contributed to the national economy. And no one has experience he has in a Sri Lankan context. He has been involved in managing over 30 hotels, either as the manager, general manager, consultant, or director, or managing director, or the chief executive. So he, no one has his experience. So yesterday I interviewed him. Uh, and he, he likes me also, I know, but he has offered me jobs. I worked with him only once, uh, but he has offered me jobs about four times. Yesterday, the people who attended the, the webinar uh, were very impressed. They asked a lot of questions. They were people who really looked up to Malin Hapagoda, his career, and they, he has helped them. Uh, so I made some notes. Uh, I did a PowerPoint presentation like this with pictures of his career. And uh, none of you came there, I'm surprised. Now you are as inspiring, some of you want to be hoteliers. Some of you should just automatically go and watch these things. It was free, offered free. Uh, the website, the, the Zoom is free. I mean, everything is free, but you should just jump at it. If I were you, if I'm in your shoes, I would have canceled everything else. Listen to that webinar last night. Now I took time, I actually did it from 1 a.m. or my time to 3.30 in the morning. I went to bed at four in the morning. But uh, I was surprised that no young hoteliers came to listen to him. The people who came, uh, people who liked uh, Malin Hapagudu, who worked with him and who were his fans. So for your, uh, this will, someone will post it on the Facebook very soon. The video is two and a half hours. Uh, if you watch it, I think it will be good for you. You can get some tips. Those who don't have time for that, I have summarized 10 things that came from the audience yesterday. Uh, I knew Malin Hapukoda for a long time, uh, but different people knew different aspects about him. So this great man, a hotelier, his career, I defined it yesterday after listening to his, uh, his friends. What are the 10 things that really made his career the most successful Sri Lankan uh, hoteliers career. So these are the 10 points. I will go through it very quickly. Uh, I knew some of these, but some were enhanced yesterday listening to my colleagues. So one is that uh, Malina Hapu uh, was always, it was mentioned that he's a big picture guy, you know, like one person, uh, Gamanu Gunawadan was talking how they, with that Kim Spence group, they went to Oman to get uh, five or six hotels to uh, on contract. And when they were trying to close the deal, Hapu got actually, Hapu called me in Canada. And he said, Chandi, forget about teaching and being a professor, come back to the hotel industry. I want you to be the chief executive officer for Atkins Spence Hotel in Oman. So he offered me the job first. I said, no, Hapu, I, I, I can't leave. My, my wife doesn't want to go to the Middle East. Uh, and then uh, he gave the job to Preeti Vira, the former general manager of uh, uh, Galadar. So he always recruited people he liked and good people. But Gamano was telling the story how when they he went there, the discussion, some of the tips he got, he said, Mr. Hapukuda always we worried about little micro things. He got the macro picture, you know, he, he knew. Uh, so I said, Hapu, how did you convince Oman 
to give business to a country with a civil war, right? I mean, that's a good say, right? So he said, oh, we went there and, you know, first time nothing happened. And then we went there again to Oman. They still managed those six, six or five or six hotels. Then we invited the owner's family to Sri Lanka. So I said, okay, so what did you do? So I'm, I'm questioning him. Basically. He said, oh, we took them to Triton, which is now Heritage Ahungala. Then I knew if I tried to drive the uh, person to uh, Sigiriya or Damulla, that will be a, not a very good impression. The roads are bad and the road blocks and all that. We helicopter. <laughs> we flew them to uh, Damulla and they stayed at the Kandalama Hotel. So once you see Kandalama and Triton, you, anyone will be so impressed. And then we did the deal, closed the deal, put it, and then I did another trip with the whole team. We got the uh, contract. So I learned yesterday that, he's, that he, he, he looked at the macro level. He hired good people to work in his team and uh, he delegated, but he dealt with the macro level thing. And they also said he always thought outside the box, which I knew. What I didn't know about Hapu was yesterday, I said, what, do you, what, what is your advice to young hoteliers in you know, joining the industry in a difficult time? He said, maintenance, focus on maintenance. Uh, so that was his focus. He said, you know, uh, when I was general manager, I mean, he spent most uh, one third of his career at Mentor Beach Hotel. Uh, he became the manager there when you know, before his 25th birthday because the manager there got fired and he got promoted at a young age. Uh, so he was lucky, but he quickly learned three things. Maintenance, project management, finance, marketing. So all our non-operational areas he focused on. And that worked for him. Uh, so because Bentor Beach opened only with 65 rooms, they decided to put another 65 rooms. He got involved in the project and then they built another hotel called Wala, Warahe and Walaua. And then of the Coral Gardens, new project, he oversaw the project. He, he learned project management uh, and he's very, from an operational guy, he's very focused on the bottom line profits. And marketing PR, the last four points, seven, eight, nine, ten, they're all about human beings. He said, I always recruit the best in the market. Most hoteliers didn't. They were scared or nervous in recruiting people who were more qualified than me. But he said, I always thought of Chandi. I offered him. And if he said no, then I went to the second person. Uh, I mean, not that I am great, but you know, he, he, he wasn't scared in uh, recruiting people who were more academically qualified than him. So that was a good point. He recruited the best. And of course, his former subordinates spoke very highly about how he built team. And then, of course, empowered them and delegated the whole thing to them. And of course, they also told a lot of stories about his uh, human relations with the employees, the unions, and all that. Uh, when this is posted, uh, check the Global uh, Hospitality Forum. The video will be there. I think about normally they are prompt in about two days' time. Uh, if I'm new, I will watch it and try to learn something from an amazing, the most amazing career of a Sri Lankan hotelier. All right, so this is, we have done uh, four, four webinars so far. Today is the last one. We have one more hour of it. So I just want to mention, first one was about rebuilding. I mean, we, not Sri Lanka, we looked at 17 countries. Uh, we looked at the global thing. Everything was global, uh, what we did. Rebuilding. Second one, we focus on innovations. Third one, we focus on hotel management. Fourth one, we looked at a very... Uh, hands-on type of thing, food under management and events. And all what we said was global, but some of our old case studies, but we try to look at it and try to see, can I implement this in the middle of a pandemic or when the pandemic is over? Can I learn some, something from this? Will there be something personally for me to gain? So that's what we did. Then looking at 2023, but we try to learn from some old case studies. Today, we are, of course, focusing on understanding people. I'll go fairly quickly. So you know the drill. Uh, initially, I plan to give you 10 articles, but I have given, a, given 13 articles altogether. Uh, and also, there are five webinar PowerPoints. Some of the PowerPoints are very big with the photographs. But everything I have uh, sent to uh, Gaia, in case you are interested in having them, uh, no copyright. It's a common uh, property. You can use those as well. Uh, Write to Gaia and she will make sure you get the PowerPoints. I want to tell you this story. This is an old survey done by uh, 
Sheraton. Sheraton at one time one of the greatest hotel companies, American companies in the world. Many years ago, Sheraton did some market research. They focus on not the potential customers, not the current customers, but the customers they have lost in the last five years. That is very important, right? More often people don't do that. When you lost someone, you should know why you, they don't come to your hotel or travel agency or your destination anymore. Uh, you know, you have to understand that. So they did this research. So they, after the old fashion, uh, this is before pre-internet, pre-website uh, uh, era, or social media era. So they send letters, old fashioned letters to use their database, wrote to them saying, you know, Mr. Uh, McLeod, we have not seen you for two years in our hotel. Uh, you always came, when you came, you stayed at Boston Sheraton, but we don't see you anymore. Why? It's very simple question. Don't make questionnaires too complex, too, too academic. It's not a, they're not writing a thesis. Customers don't have time. Don't ever design a customer survey questionnaire which takes more than three minutes. Don't do that. It is, you know, meaningless. You know, I get this Walmart service, you know, I just first check how many minutes, it takes 15 minutes, I delete it. I, I don't want to waste 15 minutes writing answers. Most people would have that type of uh, attitude in the scarcity of time. So make it very short. So they ask one question, why aren't you coming back to our hotel? That's all. So this is what they learned. One person got a letter from their spouse uh, of the customer saying, sorry, my husband passed away. That's why he didn't come. So one person have died. That's fair. Three persons said, I don't come. I still like your uh, Sheraton uh, in Boston or LA or Miami or whatever, New York. I don't come back because I recently got married and my wife or husband does not like your hotel. I like your hotel. But she's a hired person. She always goes to the adjoining hotel, which is managed by hire. So 3%, then nothing we have done wrong, but his or the customer's life has changed. And sometimes, depending on uh, the stage of your partnership, you listen to your partner, right? 6% said, we don't come back to you at Sheraton because we found this Hilton, uh, brand new Hilton, uh, their rates are 5% less than you, and but their product is newer. So they, are, they have a company to advantage. So we go to Hilton now. So they said, okay, we should do something about our product and all that. 9% said we don't come back because I am transferred. I don't work in the north part of USA anymore. Now I, I live in uh, Florida. So I cover, I do a sales job in Florida and Atlanta only. So I don't come to Boston anymore. Fair enough. 9% said, you know, it's a, it's a location issue. Not that Sheraton had done anything wrong, you know, like that. But, you know, the most important part of the research for Sheraton, 81% said, I don't come back to your hotel because it's an attitude of indifference of one service employee of your hotel. Understand? 81% decided not to come back to your hotel because they were upset about the attitude Bad attitude of a front of the house employee. So it can be a guest service agent, a lobby manager, can be a receptionist, whatever you call them, front office agent, uh, or the uh, concierge, or can be the coffee shop, uh, uh, the butler, whoever. So someone upset them, said the wrong thing or whatever. So that shows the importance of the people element in our business. This is true research, right? 81%. They didn't say we were upset with 10 employees. One employee. So that's why front of the house, recruitment, training, motivation is ultimate. That is the face of the face of the, your business. So you know, so you should not recruit just because the local MP sent the letter and said to hire the no, that is all that's nonsense. You hire the right person for the right job with the right attitude. Um, I'll give an example. Uh, when I was a dean in my last job, when I worked for the ministry at George Brown College, it, it is the largest faculty of hospitality, culinary arts, tourism in this country. 
Uh, when I joined them, there were 40, I think 45 professors and 2,400 students. I remember very clearly in 2007. We grew the business so much, we increased to 17 programs, three schools. So I had three chairs, directors reporting to me and I was the dean and I was the hiring manager of new professors. So every time we hired a professor, uh, we trained the person for two years. I made sure that person did 24 programs with our human resources and training. Uh, so all that training development, when I hire them, not like universities, colleges we hire because you are good in your job. That's why you get hired. And then you have a PhD or MBA, whatever. And then we hire them. Then we tell them, look, you are hired because you are a professional, but you are not a educator yet. We will train you over two years. So we train them to teach classroom handling, all those things. 24 courses they do. So we took it very serious and I was responsible for training these professors. During my five years with them, we recruited 15 more because the school, the faculty expanded a lot. And we used, I used to spend about a week hiring a new professor because it's important to hire. It's a good hire. I mean, immediately you go to the top 5% of the pay scale in the government workers. So it's, it's a very important job. And I had a full panel uh, of peers who interviewed this person. We never hired the best, most qualified person. We hired the professor who had the right qualifications, who are the right fit to our organization, who will who are aligned with our philosophy of customer service, our customers being the students and the industry. Uh, we spent lot, I spent a lot of time aligning, checking that person's background. And we it's an important issue. So during my five years, I hired another. 15 professors and it took a long time to make it. So I'm trying to say the importance of recruitment at any level, right? You have to spend a lot of time doing that. And then after that, once you have to train them, but just because you have a qualification, academic qualification does not make you a good teacher, understand? You have to learn how to teach. And that's what we gave them in two years. So by the end of the two years, they were profit, dual professionals. They, Excel in an industry, they were event planners or whatever, and now they have a PhD and they are also trained to teach. So that is important. In every job, just because you have a qualification, you don't have the skills needed for the job. So you hire the attitude and we try to train the skill. All right, so dealing with people, people are different, right? We are men, women, other. Uh, and then we are different in our colors and you know brown, yellow, white, black, everything. This concept is about dealing with customers, all types of human beings. So your superiors mainly, uh, your girlfriends, boyfriends, fiancés, all the people, associates, employees, suppliers, industry partners, local committees. You know, it's very important. And if I ask you the question, and I'm summarizing this, this is from a a long, long seminar of two or three day uh, seminar. So what is the real way to achieve the best results? In my view, your ability to understand the other people, because you are trying to motivate them, convince them or inspire them, whether they are your workers, your children, your, uh, your uh, customers, suppliers, you are trying to get other person to say yes or agree with you or contribute to your ideas, motivate, convince, inspire. So you have to understand how the other person's mind works. Often we think when we are growing up that everybody else think like us. No, everybody is so different. So that's why it is a very challenging thing. So my, my concept is, uh, I think you read that article where initially I sort of analyzed but later this got shaped when I was sent to uh, uh, France uh, for training by Le Meridian. I went to the management school in uh, Paris and uh, Tours uh, to be trained as a general manager for Le Meridian. It's called the Institute, uh, Management Institute uh, for Le Meridian. Uh, there, a psychologist came with a similar concept. So I combined the two and sort of developed this. So I tried to make it very simplified. I called softy for the first category. They are normally the people who like rounds. And when I do this in a face-to-face, -face, bigger, longer seminar, I normally shake hands with the attendees who come. Normally we take 40 people, shake their hand, look at the eyes, look at the dress, uh, look at how your 
uh, if you're a lady, have your nail polish is uh, done. And I take a decision, this person belongs to X category. I say, and we have four corners in the ballroom with a circle, a triangle, different shape. I say, okay, miss, you go to uh, the where the circle is. And then when we start the workshop, I describe something and try to get a vote from them. And normally 90% of the time, we get it right from the first impressions of the shake hand, the way you look at the eye, the shyness, how you dress, all that. We try to figure out where this, what is this person's personality. So the round, they like the shape round, not the bodily, but they like that. They're called softies. These are the people, your colleagues or your children or your girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever, who are normally fashionable. They change the, you know, the dresses to go with the trends and all that. They are very active. They are bubbly. When they smile, they smile with their sort of eyes. Uh, very cheerful, polite speech. When they send emails, they don't get into the business straight away. They first say, hey, dear, dear Charlene, how are you? Last time we met, we had a great time. You know, I, I always love meeting you. You know, do a little bit of bullshitting, right? Or sugarcoating. Uh, you know, some flowery language. That's their personality. Even when they are giving a bad, bitter pill, they sugarcoat it. They tell, make you happy first. And, you know, if you have a boss like this, their meetings are very friendly. Coffee is served, some, you know, cookies are served, and their officers are well decorated. When they speak, I always uh, speak with gestures. Italians speak with, you know, hands, legs, everything. But this, Category also they are active. Normally they are not, they are sort of hyper people. They know angels. When things go wrong, they become emotional, they cry, they, they, they want sympathy in a crisis. They expect re fl favors in return. So if I tell a uh, 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 major, your, your tie is very nice, you're wearing a beautiful tie. If I'm a softy, I expect major to. Re return the favor to me, return a compliment to me. So everything they do things to get something back. So this is the way human beings are. No one is perfect. But normally they have good manners, they're helpful. There's another personality who's exactly the opposite. They are like squares. They are toughies. They are either tough or they like the world to think you are tough, right? Sometimes they are the most scary people, like Putin. A lot of people I know, Major is a big fan of him. But you know, people who act tough, they have an inner psychological fear of inferior complex. That's why they act uh, in an inhuman way sometimes, you know, like what's happening in Europe now. So toughies, they're totally opposite of the, the circle or the softies. They wear old fashioned thick clothes. Not that they don't have money, but they don't change with the trend. We, we, we don't change. You know, this is my father had the same uh, tennis racket, and now I play it. And I, when I am too old to play tennis, I expect my son to use the same racket. It's the best racket that you can buy in Europe. Type of attitude they have. They walk slow, very steady. And when they look at you, they sort of stare at you, uh, speak very little with directive words. They say, I will tell you one more time, very directing, or like the Godfather, I will uh, I will make an offer that you can't refuse. You know, like, you know, they, they're tough talk. Their meetings are all one, uh, one way, one-sided, you know, no discussion, open uh, brainstorming, no, that's all crap. This is my way or highway type of attitude they have. Their office, office again, dark, don't have pictures because their attitude is, why should I have my wife's or husband's picture and family picture? This way I work. I separate work and uh, office. I don't have to bring my family to my workplace. That is the attitude. Uh, when they talk, they're very calm, no gestures, you know, and they're always suspicious about other people. When things go wrong, they say, oh, I knew Pereira is not trustworthy, you know. And if your customer is a toughie, don't try your sales talk. They don't like to be manipulated. You will never get the business 
if you try to manipulate a toughie. So that's why you have to analyze what is that person's personality, change your sales message or whatever that you are trying to get them to do, change the way you communicate. These are the people at a meeting, their eyes open, they are wider, they are wider you think they are awake, but they are daydreaming, you know, their mind is somewhere. So that's a softy, this is opposite of softy. In the middle of those two categories, softy is the size. Remember the shape, shape is round, toughy is the square. In between, there's another one, that's a triangle. They are the perfecties, or at least they think they are perfect. They are not perfect, but they think. These are the guys who are in between. They don't wear the old fashioned clothes, but they don't try to dress like uh, Justin Bieber or Justin Timberlake. They go in the middle part, they're neat and matching clothes. Everything matches the tie, the hanky, you know, and walk very carefully. They don't get distracted when they talk precise, exactly planned. Uh, there are meetings, they say this meeting will take 59 minutes, and of course in 59 minutes, the meeting will be over. Uh, and of course, when you go to the office, everything is well arranged, everything has a place, the pen, everything. And uh, when I do this face-to-face, -face, I, I act actually, I can't do that on Zoom, so I'm just going through the words. But they use some, see softies always all over, they talk like this, toughies, no movement other than the mouth, these guys use selective gestures. I will tell you only once more. And then people listen to them because they are very precise. There are no angels. Things go wrong. In their mind, I'm a perfect, perfect, perfect. I don't make mistakes. When something goes wrong, they blame, they raise their voice. If they are the general manager or the MD, they put the whole blame on the other people. I told you that never do this again. And you know, and everybody's okay, boss. Okay, I have a fault. Try to. They always look for others' mistakes. I'll give you a story. Uh, when I worked in Jamaica, uh, I was most impressed with my uh, training manager. I, so I manage a British company. Uh, my, uh, my resident manager, number two, uh, and the training manager, they came from UK. So they, this training manager was very good. I was a big fan of hers. But uh, two things happened. Um, uh, so I was, I was new, the general manager. I, I gave a task to each of my, I think I had 11 managers, each of the 11 managers, one task, one week to do it. I, I'm, I was testing them. So they will say, okay. And then next uh, two days later, I give them another project. So all this is planned, right? And I give them another project. Can you do this also? So Jamaicans, by nature, most of them have a different personality. Okay, Mr. Nani, no problem, I'll do that. This uh, training manager, her name is Linda Taylor. She's my friend, she's my Facebook friend. Linda said, uh, no, Mr. Nani, I can't do that. So I was thinking, oh, I'm making a mental note, right? I'm the new job boss. Why, why do you mean you can't do it? He said, Mr. Nani, you have given me one project. It will take one week for me to finish. And then you have given me another project yesterday. Uh, that will take three days of my time. Now today you're giving a third one, but I can't do all three. She was very straightforward. I didn't like it initially. I didn't like it. Because I think, oh, I see. You're resenting, uh, in, uh, you are insubordinate. That's what my first impression. I never judge your first impression. You have to, you know. So I said, okay. End of the, my first week, next Monday, I asked everybody, have you done the projects I gave? Linda has done her two projects very well. Others say, oh, Mr. Chandi, I need two more days, three more days, you know. Soon come, soon come. In, in, uh, in Jamaica, soon come means anything from, uh, like we say, we'll do it in five minutes. Soon come. It can be uh, five days or five months, you know. Some of them, I mean, they're nice people, but, you know, that's, that's a, sometimes your national culture affects your personality also, right? I like Linda after that. I knew if I give Linda a project, it will be done. I don't have to remind her. She will come and say, this is, um, uh, I did it. This is what it costs. This is what I suggest for the future. Very professional. My first year, the, the Englishman, uh, he was a Welshman. Uh, he was transferred and I was looking for some, one of my team members to be my number two. Linda was the one I wanted to promote because she was very efficient. 
And of course, it's a closely close team. I sort of sounded this with other people, but the other people in the team didn't support it. So I didn't promote her because sometimes alignment is more important than the efficiency, right? So I felt that because of her personality, she was a perfect team, one particular time, but also sometimes she criticized other colleagues and all that. So she wasn't the most popular person. So if she became number two, I would probably have a little bit extra challenges. So I didn't promote her. So sometimes you don't give the job to the best person, but the most suitable person for that team at that stage of the operation. All right. So there's another person in between the toughness, the square, and the circle. They are called confusing. This is like Mr. Sudhana Rodrigo. Nothing wrong with them. They're born like that. You know, they are sort of clumsy and little, you know, uh, not everything will, you know, crisp iron and all that, walk in different directions and get so many projects, get distracted, uh, talk with many messages, you know, and say, my gosh, did you see the new... Uh, New episodes of Crown is really nice. And by the way, you know what's happening in Russia is terrible. Putin has gone mad. I mean, he's a, he's a villain. Uh, and by the way, I heard Obama got uh, COVID and he uh, tweet. I, I am a tweet. Uh, I'm, I follow him. Uh, and by the way, did you read this new book? In one minute, you have about four messages. You talk all types. Same way they uh, walk. They go all directions, all they are hyper and you do different things. You go to their office crowded desk and you check their inbox, 500 uh, emails not read for last one month, irrelevant gestures, you know, uh, and also they get very angry and vindictive. These are bad enemies to have, the Confucius. But artistic people, creative, practical, and you can give them a lot of projects, many projects at the same time, you know, uh, it's a different personality. Now, I used to, so as I told you, I was, I was responsible for a team of 60 professors and about, I had another 200 instructors, but professors mainly talking about them, 60, all of them, none of them had officers, only the director or the academic chair had office and the professors uh, have partitions. So the big office partitions every morning, I went to the three schools, said hi to the academic chair, then did a walk, and shook hands with the professors who are around, talked with them, did little PR, then went to the third, second school, third school. That was my morning. It took, you know, 30, 30 minutes. And that was my little PR round. And I used to always think of this concept. So I look at the cubicles. I decide what is the personality of the professor. So some cubicles are messy, you know, everything, files here, piled up here. And then I go to the next cubicle, everything is perfect, clean. Uh, you know, color coded, you know, that's a perfect thing. And then I go to the next cubicle, and, you know, this is the soft thing in my mind. I don't tell them, you know, flowers and a picture of the, my daughter's picture. And then uh, uh, my golf trophy I won, everything. It's a temple. They have created a temple in their uh, place. Uh, and then, of course, I go to the fourth cubicle, dark, one little light, couple of files, nothing else. That's a toughie. He, he or she thinks, why should I bring all these things? I mean, this is the way I work. Eight hours, then I go home. You know, I, So there, it's quite interesting you, how you can judge people very quickly when you sort of develop this. I don't want you to go and make notes, but it's a very practical type of thing. So this uh, summarize, summarize, summarize the concept. Uh, let me see the time I have, the 30 minutes. Okay. So this is the circle, which I call softy. If you think you are a softie, you are a softie, you will not normally like these people, squares, the tough people. You don't normally like them. But sometimes you have to work with people with different personalities, right? As long as you don't marry the opposite person, you're okay. Uh, living in the same house for 50 years will be a tough thing. If you are a softie, actually most people in hospitality are softies, particularly yeah, softies are the people who join the sales team. If I'm hiring manager, I will hire softies who are fashionable, talk pleasantly to my sales team, right? 
But if I'm hiring a maintenance engineer, it doesn't have to be a soft, it can be this one, doesn't matter. So the job is important. Normally the ones in between the triangle, these guys are good administrators, because they are, like to be the boss. They, they think they are perfect and all that. So different, so you do find the right person for the right uh, box. Triangles are, these are the perfect ones. And then of course, triangles normally dislike the spirals. Spirals are the people who are clumsy and doing a lot of projects at a time and all that. So these people and these people don't like each other. These people and these people don't like each other. But the theory also, these people can get along with the adjoining box. They can tolerate them to some extent because they have overlapping uh, characteristics. Similarly, these people can align with the adjoining, but they will be bad team players with these people unless they know the theory. Then of course, you have the Garmin Fonseca type who are who have a little bit of everything. I don't think many people are like that. Those are complex personalities. Very difficult to judge them. There's a fifth category that is like the Omni Fonseca. They have everything all in together. I call them complexity. Very difficult to uh, analyze the personalities. So they are wired differently, but it's not a bigger population. When I do hospitality training, I find most people have uh, the, uh, the triangle, there are a lot of triangles, a uh, few triangles, few spirals, a lot of circles, uh, not many uh, toughies because of the nature of our jo job. Now, if I implement in this little concept, so from 73, I've been thinking, meeting Garmin Fonseca and all that, I was thinking about this, but I didn't take it seriously because I, I thought this is just, uh, you know, child, uh, young man's idea of how human beings work. So I didn't talk about it. I just kept it in my mind, but I used that, you know, to judge people, judge what type of a person Solomon was, how to deal with Mark Bostock, how to get a scholarship uh, to England fully paid by him. So it worked to my advantage. I was actually somewhat manipulative, I must confess, but it was done in a systematic way. Si uh, Solomon in 30 minutes, because of this concept, I knew where he was coming from. I didn't show any fear, but I tried to learn about him. I tried to be in his shoes. If you're not sure, try to be in that person's shoes, where he's coming from. Respect was very important to him, as someone wrote on the social media, uh, I think Major wrote it. So I had to give him that, but I knew how to manipulate his mind, right? What to give him, the respect, Right? Uh, so when I did a couple of favors, I have won him for the rest of my time, you know. And not only those two years I managed that hotel, after 10 years later, when I every time I went to the village, I went to see Swani and how the hotel is. Solomon will come the moment he, he hear he hears that, you know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Javanan has come. He comes running, he will put his sarong, uh, you know, in respect, you put the sarong down and he'll worship. You know, he, I, I won him his support for life, but I used him for two years, you know, but I did favors to him. And so when you know how to deal with a particular personality, it is to your advantage. 1988, I got another scholarship. I was sent to France for this training. And then of course, there's a PhD uh, psychologist gave this lecture. It was very similar to what I have been thinking. Of course, they didn't call complexity and all these things. He had different words, but similar concept. I then got into a, a debate with that prophet. I disagreed with him because what he told was, he was writing a book on something like this, the concept. He said, people are born in a particular box. Their whole life, they will be like that and they will die in the same box. I disagreed with him, right? But this is a management institute. So I said, I don't think I, I agree with that concept. People change. He didn't, he was not very flexible in his theories anyway. But I picked the essence of his concept. Now, after this uh, uh, module, you may not agree with all the things I've been telling, but if you took 10% of the ideas that I shared with you and you thought 
that is aligned with your mentality and you can use it, that is good enough, right? So that's what happened to me. So this guy's name was Alan Kardar. I think you can Google him and he's a well-published author. Uh, I picked some of his ideas and the first thing in the plane coming from Paris to Colombo, I analyzed my own personality. I thought, you know, the things that drive me, you know, what, what is my personality? The first thing you should do is try to analyze yourself. Second thing, you identify personalities around you. So in my case, I try to analyze my parents, uh, my wife, my son, you know, like people around me. Then I try, I didn't tell them that, but I try to adjust my communication, see whether I can do better. Then I use it in my workplace. I have 13 managers at uh, Galadari. I tell you what I did. I couldn't, uh, once a year, I had, I was responsible for 10 outlets. So each outlet has a manager. We call them uh, French maitre d'. I mean, restaurant manager, basically. And then after that, second supervisor was called uh, station. Uh, uh, you were the head waiter, basically. Number two, supervisor. So maitre d', supervisor. Once a year, I shuffle all these people. I couldn't shuffle the chef and the chief steward and the banquet manager, but the outlet managers. I, I shuffle them for better results. Because people get in hospitality, you get bored. You know, you have to give them a new challenge. So the one who managed the French, uh, La Palma d'Or, the French restaurant, I will have a chat with him. Do you like to learn about uh, how to write, uh, run a Chinese restaurant? I transferred it to uh, her to Marco Polo, uh, you know, with the uh, orientation. Then someone else will, from, uh, from uh, for, uh, room service, I transferred to the coffee shop. Someone who managed the nightclub, I transfer the person to run a Colombo club, so shuffle them. But after learning this concept, I did a little social experiment. I ran a three days, uh, three half days seminar on this concept of personality analysis in 1988, end of 1988. And it worked. I realized departments that I had unproductivity, low productivity, where the manager and the supervisor had conflicts, I realized why. They belong to different personality groups, opposite personalities. So having done that, I said, okay, I shuffle them next time to people with similar attitude in one department. So each night nightclub, for example, the manager and the deputy, the supervisor, I made sure they are aligned or they are adjoining boxes, not opposite boxes. That experiment proved to be right. End of that year, we increase our productivity by 13%, less complaints, and they work together. There's better teamwork because the manager and the supervisor didn't fight all the time. So the waiters, everybody were happy and they gave a better service. The customers were happy and they got more tips and they got more service charge. The whole thing had a ripple in, uh, uh, effect on positivity. So that was the experiment and I knew from that day, I started teaching this concept. Question of the day. I would like you to go to the chat, uh, chat box down there. Analyze yourself now. Okay? One word. Just put out of these five, which one describe you best? It may not be 100% right. Doesn't matter. Pick one of these, which represent your personality. Type it down in the chat box. So far, Lashika has written. Two people have written. Major wrote. Okay, let me make a note of these things. Please hurry up or to only type one, one word. It can't take more than a minute.
Okay, I read few more. Don't worry about the spelling and all that. Just, just, just write. Only nine people have written. Others are they can't find the chat box or what? I need few more. At least three more. All right, that's enough. So we have a, a breakdown. We have about four softies, four complexes. They like to be like Garmini Fonseca. We have two toughies and one confusing. So I, I, I thank the one who identify yourself as a confusing. A lot of people don't like to do that, but you are honest. Thank you very much for doing that. No perfecting. So that's your personal analysis of yourself. Uh, end of the course, you may change it, but uh, let's go to the next slide now. Thank you very much. So we have a general idea. I don't... Uh... Okay, so in personality analysis, what you're trying to do, I think one of uh, your, the moderator last week uh, said very nicely about the iceberg. So I want to put a picture of iceberg. This is the same thing what we're doing. When we meet a human being, you see the tip of the iceberg, right? But from the way the person dress, talk, look, walk, you try to make a judgment. You try to make a judgment of the what is beneath the water, which you can't see. But you try to make a judgment of the person's mentality. That's what you're trying to do. All right? So it's a quite a neat thing. I'll give you an example. In the early 90s, I worked for an American university in the heart of London, in Waterloo. It was called Schiller International University. I was, I was number two of the hotel school, and then my boss, Professor Kotas, uh, retired suddenly, and then I was promoted. I was acting director there in 1990. So I ran the hotel school, master's program and a bachelor's. Uh, and I used to, in London, I mean, you don't know, you should not be driving. You should you take the subway. And then, you know, subway took 15 minutes from where my house. I used to get up early morning and take the uh, tube, as we call it in England, the subway, metro. One day, I was coming from Balham to Waterloo in London. I can see a gentleman in front of me. Uh, I can't see his face. But... Because I was always, when I see interesting people, I try to use this concept and try to figure out what is that person's personality. I decided that person, these are the things I decided. I mean, this is just a fun game for myself, right? I have to keep myself occupied. I get bored. So I decided this person must be working in a bank. That was easy because the, that uh, subway actually went to the bank area. For, it's like... Uh, it's like the Wall Street in uh, in, in uh, London. Uh, and he was wearing a pinstripe coat. I can see the sleeves. Pinstripe coats are very popular at that time in the early 90s for uh, people who work in the financial sector. He was reading the Financial Times. Financial Times is the pink newspaper. So I said, okay, the guy must be working in a bank, uh, right? And, you know, and then I looked down. He was wearing a brown shoe and a black shoe. But he was very well dressed, but brown and black. I could stop laughing, right? I'm now looking at the person and I'm trying to figure out he's a clumsy. He got to be a clumsy. If you are a triangle, it will never happen to a perfect. Tea. Because perfect, tea, if you are leaving your house early morning from whatever you are coming from, a Balham or West Ham, whatever. You would, you would have known that I can't check the color of my shoe in the morning because my kids are sleeping in this room. So he would have taken the shoes the previous day. Think They think always think ahead. Polish it. Keep the two black shoes uh, by the door uh, near, near where there's a chair. And in the morning, I'll, I'll have a shower, get dressed, go there, wear the shoes. It will never happen. But this guy probably crept into uh, his kid's room or whatever. I'm guessing all this. Took two pairs of shoes, 
didn't know one was brown, one was black, and he's wearing a mix shoes. So it was, you know, I had a lot of fun in uh, thinking of this concept and applying it to uh, real life. So this particular concept, I'll be very quick now. It's it's about inner personalities, right? What is beneath the water? They're trying to make a judgment about a person's inner personality by learning this concept. It's not the management style. Management styles we keep on changing. Management style is the act. Uh, now, for example, if I'm managing a group of very mature managers at Mount Lemonia Hotel, my management style can be very delegating. I delegate because my managers are very experienced. But if I'm managing a place like, I think I told you a story about opening that Buddies International in Guyana, I was a very directive manager, general manager there. But I'd open the hotel within a week and the, man, the, the staff were not trained and had to train. And I said, don't ask questions, do this. I'm, I became a very directive manager. Now that is not my personality. But then I did an I'd open it in a one, uh, one week. People were not trained. They didn't know anything about hoteliering. I said, trust me, do what I am asking you to do. You will be fine, right? In uh, Iraq, when I managed about 200 employees in uh, 13 uh, or 12 restaurants, I was a more of a participative manager because I had all these experts coming from uh, Oberoi School of Management and from Egypt and a lot of professionals. So I could uh, sort of, you know, get their views and manage it that way. So national characteristics, the fact that we are Sri Lankan has an impact on our personality. So Jamaican, that has an impact on your personality. If you are Russian, that has an impact on your personality. If you are American, you, you know, so national nationality also has an impact on you. So that's what I disagreed with my professor from France. He believed that you are born with it and you will forever live and you, are, you die in the same personality. I don't believe so. I think people change the home environment. When people get older, I now think totally differently from certain things. You get the maturity and some wisdom. And this is another lecture, depression passages, some, when something uh, really goes wrong in your life. Uh, some people are depressed for a long time. Uh, and I have personally experienced this in the last seven months. Uh, and some people take a very short time to get over that. So, when you are depressed, your personality changes temporarily. So this is a very sort of a in-depth study. All you have to know is this is a tool I am telling you, it, if you just master the basics, it's good for you to be as a leader, to build teams, to increase sales, do internal marketing, you know, make the employees happy increase the productivity, there are so many things and I, each of these is a different lecture point, but in a nutshell, improving your communication, uh, improving product quality, customer service, and reducing complaints. In my case, managing diverse hospitality teams around the world. No concept has helped me more than personality analysis in my career. So I want to now show a lot of slides and go very fast. And uh, I will also comment about some of the people that uh, we, I mentioned about in the case studies. So 74, 75, I started my management career in somewhat, uh, I was a trainee executive chef at Ventura Beach. I was hired by Mr. Hapagoda, who I interviewed yesterday. He has a similar personality like me. I, I quite like, even today I'll do anything for him. I, yesterday I, I was up till 3.30 interviewing him and I want to do it for him. I want to do it very well. I put a uh, PowerPoint uh, side presentation. He doesn't collect all the photographs. So we had to, I had to find from different people and did a uh, big PowerPoint presentation on him and you know, things like that. Now, a couple of assignments he gave me showed me at a very young age that he is a person whom I can consider as a mentor. I, I he's five years older than me. Look up, get advice, and he was he has always been there for me. So sometimes you make a decision. I didn't know personality that well uh, that time, but I picked very good mentors. Now I mentioned about Mark Bostock. I knew exactly where he's coming from. He's a very close personality to me. Uh, and of course you had to do certain things. He didn't treat the way he treated me. 
he did, did all the managers. I was chosen out of eight managers. I'm the only one with another person, two people, sent to England and they spent a lot of money sending me. But because personality analysis helped me to get along with the chairman of the company at that time. Of course, then for six years, when I worked in from Mathara to Ambalangwada to Hikkadua, Benthota, Beruwala, and also Alugdama, dealing with, you know, thugs, it helped me, you know, analyzing Solomon. And uh, before that, I was dealing with a guy called uh, Leslie in Hikkadua. He was a tough man. Uh, and I was, you know, this uh, analysis helped me to understand people, you know. 84, I have to tell you this story very quickly. 84, I, I left all these jo other jo top jobs and I became a banquet waiter uh, in uh, the, but the best hotel in, uh, in England, uh, Dorchester. Uh, I told, before that, I was managing operations for John Keyes for seven hotels. They didn't care about that. And they, they said, oh, no, no. We, we, you, how many days can you work uh, in between your master's studies? I said, I can work three days. Okay. Banquet waiter, part time. We will pay you eight pounds for three hours and that's it. That's what I did. I had to pay rent and pay school fees and very expensive uh, studying in England. I always looked up to Anton Musima, greatest chef at that time in Britain. He's a Swiss German. He was the youngest Swiss master chef ever. At 24, he had become the master chef. Then, uh, you know, he has a long career and he started writing books and all that. I was so scared of the chef. I was a banquet uh, waiter, right? And uh, I had never spoken with him. But at the end, I finished now. I graduated with my master's. I had three more months to live in England where I had a work permit. I decided, and I've been executive chef and all that before. I decided, knowing his reputation, I want to work under him for, I think, two months, or two months, two and a half months. So I took a lot of courage and went to see a chef. And then he said, oh, what can I do for you? So I took a, he had a secretary, I took an appointment, went to see him. He said, oh, yes, uh, I, uh, I know you. You are the one who served the queen. We, we, uh, the banquet manager chose you to serve the head table, queen and Prince Philip and Margaret Thatcher. So he knew that. He didn't even know my name. So I said, my name is Chandi. Uh, so he said, oh, OK. Uh, he didn't even give me a seat. I was standing in his office. What can I do for you? I said, you know, chef, I, I worked in the banqueting and I also had a training in the food and beverage controls. And I want to work under you before I leave uh, England. Isn't that nice to hear? Nice to hear. Uh, when do you want to work? I said, I'm ready now. He said, oh, no, no, no. You have to go to the personnel. The dating called human resources at that time. It's 84. Go to personnel office, speak with the personnel manager, put your name down and then you know, when your turn comes, you can come and work under me. So I said, okay, chef, thank you. I went to see the personal manager. Personal manager said, okay, I put your name. Uh, come in about uh, year's time. I said, one year. I I'm leaving. I have I'm going back home. Uh, three months. She said, oh, no, no, no. We have all the people graduating from hotel schools with a chef diploma wanted to work under Anton Busima. Their salary goes double. If they say, I was trained by Anton Musima, it was, you know, he was so respected. I wanted to work under him, but there's his waiting list. Next day, I went to see him again. Uh, and then uh, personally, I said, if, if chef can overrule, he can, but I can't. There's a waiting list. I think it will take a year before you get your turn. Next day, I went to see Anton Musima again. And he was getting a bit annoyed with me. He said, uh, I told you that you had to uh, speak to the person. I said, I did. But there's a one-year waiting list, chef. Uh, but I'm going in three months' time. I really want to work on it. He was getting, I, I can't help you. I said, Mr. Musiman, don't pay me. I will work free for you for three months. He stopped talking. He said, sit down. <laughs> Give me a seat. He said, You'll work free. Why? I said, because you are such a great chef. you know. And I knew his personality. He is Swiss-German. Also, that has an impact. He was a, but he was a round and a triangle combined. And I knew exactly how to deal with people like that. But I had to show him a benefit. I said, I'll work free. Not that money was that big to him. I mean, even they were making a lot of money. But he said, you will work free. I see. So he, I think he thought, oh, this guy has character. And of course, my wife gave me a hard time. He said, you have to pay rent. You're working free. 
I said, but it's a greater chef. I said, but you're going to, not going to be a chef again. You want to be a general? I said, I know. But my gut, sometimes you have to follow your heart. If I work under this guy, it will do something good. I learned so much from him, other than cook, cooking also I learned. I learned PR from him. You know, the way he communicates, the way he uh, wrote his books. I learned so many things from him. And uh, 10 years later, I was interviewed for a general manager's job in uh, London. Uh, I was not getting the job. So they interviewed me and then uh, they want to be mayor. They were looking for a expatriate general managers who are mobile managers. They, they have transferred from country to country. Uh, and there were a thousand man general managers like this in the company, Forte, because the biggest uh, hotel company. Uh, and there were out of the thousand, there were three people who looked like me. Uh, one was the Egyptian, one was the Sri Lankan, he just passed away, um, Nadaraja, Ranjan Nadaraja, and uh, some other person, uh, one from the Caribbean. That's it, three people out of the thousand who looked like me, uh, who were from a developing country. I was not getting the job because the man who interviewed me wasn't that keen about, you know, and he said, you're a creative guy, but I'm looking for a different profile. I said, you know, Mr. Genusi, would you like to look at my certificates? And I'm there, given me a free trip to go to London for the interview. So I want to, you know, at least I knew I'm not getting the job. So I gave my folder. He was going through the folder without any interest. It was an Italian gentleman. Suddenly he saw a certificate from Anton Musima. He said, you were, uh, you worked with Anton Musima? You were a special apprentice? I said, yes. I told this story. I got hired for the job as a general manager because of that. So my investment of working with free for two and a half months paid off uh, 10 years later. So sometimes you do follow your heart. Uh, 87, I, I, I need about five or 10 extra minutes, uh, uh, moderator. Uh, I learned to deal with Musicians, when I moved to Colombo at the uh, Five Star Business, uh, I told you the story last time, but this is, uh, and I particularly two people, I quickly worked, I did a lot of work with Noelin Hunter, who was the president of the SRAM, Sri Lanka Association of Musicians, and Sohan Mirasinghe became my best buddy, and we did a lot of music videos and shows, and they became my sort of left and right uh, arm people. So on is a circle, Noelin is a triangle. And when I communicated with them, I dealt different. With Noelin, it was more formal. With Sohan, I will go to his house, eat sing hoppers with hand, and talk with him and get the job done. I won't do that with Noelin because they're different personalities. So I learned, used this concept to be one of them. Actually, eventually I became one of them. I, I won one of those uh, music awards as well with. Uh, Sunil Pera was the one who awarded that from Island Music Award, and then I used to produce shows for them. This is years later. I became one of them. I became a producer, state producer, video producer, songwriter, all that, with that relationship. But relationship started with my analyzing their personalities. So I, the way I communicated with Sunil Pera, my friend, for six years, I did a lot of projects with him, was different from the way I dealt with uh, Dalreen or uh, Judy or other people. So these are the top musicians in Sri Lanka at that time. Uh, and I produced their annual show. Sometimes you go to a new job, you analyze people, but one or two people stand out. Now, working in Iraq, I never met Saddam Hussein, but one of my most regular customers in our nightclub and the casino, we had a casino as well, was Uday Hussein. Uday Hussein was Saddam Hussein's elder son. I had to quickly learn his personality. That would have cost me my life also if I didn't did a mistake there. So sometimes you analyze your difficult customers and all that, and then you try not to tell the wrong thing at the wrong time. Uh, in When I went to, uh, I heard a lot about Mount Everest, no, but I had to analyze, for example, Publis. Publis and I have this very good rapport. The guy read him and he understood me. And we come from a adjoining uh, personality groups. But I had to make adjustment to communicate with, 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 uh, with Mr. Saratukwa, who was the chairman of the company. But the, he was very important. So I had to adjust my way I communicated with him. Uh, 
yeah, this is in 93. I don't have to waste time, but I was chairman of the uh, uh, chairman for chairman of the very important committee for the Tourist Hotels Association of Sri Lanka. Uh, I was the chairman of Hotel Skills Improvement National Project. So we did a plan for the whole country how to improve the service standards. Only 16% of the workers were trained. And I came with this concept of training. 100 on the job trainers. These are some of the best trainers, this country, Amala Bewadan and all these people. Uh, we retrain them to be trainers and send them from Anuradhapura to Trincomalee train people. Whole idea was you don't have to come to University, I mean, University of Colombo, tourism wasn't there, but you don't have to go to the hotel school everywhere. But we send the trainers to different places and we develop one week programs, cut all the crap, one week to train a waiter, six days. Right, must know stuff. It's better to have people who know little bit than no knowledge. So, how to uh, impart that knowledge? We develop the curriculum, everything. We work with uh, you know my student Sarat Seliviratni was the principal of the hotel school, uh, and we put the whole team together, all the associations. Uh, and this is the concept I develop. I'll probably email this to you so you have it. It's a hotel skills improvement model, and then this was a major case study for Asia. I presented, this is in Pata in Bali. I presented the paper, how we did that in Sri Lanka. Then we have won a national award actually, not to brag, but at the PIM, University of uh, Jayavadanapura annual uh, management conference. That was one of the papers presented. So sometimes you develop something. I had to learn how to deal with Professor Furukan, who was the chairman of the hotel corporation. He was my key person. People who served in my committee were Malin Hapuvada, Aska Musaji, former chairman of Tourist Board, and uh, Eraj Jabevadan, who was the number two at Oberon. So those were my team members, and I was the chairman. I had to learn their personalities, but the chairman of the hotel association was very important. So it, uh, we, we need some neat stuff, but in everything I did from 73, personality analysis had something to do with it. Same when Diana has spoken, you know, we, we did so many uh, events there. We create a snow in the rainforest. For, uh, these are very different stories, but everything, uh, whether I, when I worked in Jamaica, whether I'm working with the uh, West Indian team, cricket team, or hosting uh, Prince Philip, personality analysis was the key. I knew how to deal with the West Indian cricket team captain, manager, and the president of the West Indies Cricket Board. Each one had a different personality. They came from different uh, islands. Brand Lara had a different personality, national characteristic. He spoke different type of English than my friend Clive Lo uh, Lloyd here. So I had to adjust it very quickly to deal with different people. I also used it in my later life. I was vice president of the Canadian School of Management. We set up in two, uh, in two years, seven master's programs for senior managers in the industry. Uh, I had uh, two segments in uh, Barbados, uh, one in uh, Toronto, uh, two in Jamaica, one in Botswana. So I was, my job was, I was vice president of market development. And then just an example, only for Sandals. Sandals is, is the greatest all-inclusive hotel company in the world. It's a Jamaican company, they are only in the Caribbean. Uh, all the senior team were my students. Each of them did a master's program. Myself and my uh, my boss, this is uh, my PhD supervisor, Richard Tier. We supervise all the their PCs, uh, and I, I quite learned. Uh, I quite liked it because I am now dealing with the top tier of managers, vice presidents, and GMs of the greatest hotel company in the Caribbean. But my knowledge about Caribbean was helpful. But my knowledge about personality analysis was far more useful for me to understand each of these people and how to deal with it, how to sustain the project, how to get another cohort, things like that. So you can use this in education also. Couple of more slides and then I finish. 2004-2005 uh, when I became the president of the Institute of Hospitality in UK. Now that was not easy. You know, I was an odd man, you know, they never had a president who looked like me for 85 years. Uh, so it was difficult. I had to focus a lot on my board. Each each one, I have uh, the pictures of. Uh, they came from different countries. Some came from uh, Scotland. Some came from uh, Ireland. Some came from uh, 
Cyprus, this guy came all the way from New Zealand, one came from Malta. I did the analysis for each of these people because I had to, I was their leader. I had to, and I told our chief executive, he was a colonel uh, with the commanding officer of the uh, catering corps of the British Army, Philip uh, Rodis. I said, Philip, my term as a president, I don't want to be called as the first international president. I want to be the best president you guys have ever had. I want your help. Chief executive uh, reported to the president for during that term. Uh, but I had, I told them because I had analyzed Philip's personality. Philip was uh, very much, he was an army man, he was a full colonel, with a triangle. Uh, but, you know, I knew how to manipulate his mind and I, he was a paid employee, but I was his boss. And I had to, I used the concept to get the best out of him. And also, I think the, the biggest legacy is changing the name. We were called HCIMA. Hotel Catering International Management Association. Old fashioned name. We were losing all the new uh, graduates from universities. They thought it's an old boys club. I want to give it a sort of a, with the help of the council, a new name. We got the best branding experts. And of course, changing anything in UK is very diff diff difficult. It's very old fashioned. They are everything about tradition. We had to do a referendum. So I had to go from county to county, from Northern Ireland to Wales and Try to sell this idea of the new name, Institute of Hospitality, and that, that is the name now. Um, and of course, I told about my job at the uh, George Brown. And uh, I also want to tell you what I did in the last six years. I worked with 25 different organizations doing consulting. Every project, I quickly analyzed my customers, chief executives, personality. I had to do well. So these are the academic partners that I did consulting. And then, of course, uh, I developed this concept called uh, Team Building to Art, which was a lot of fun. These are some of the best students in Niagara Falls. These are all the managers from uh, Serendip Avani and Dolphin and Kalutra Avani. Uh, so this is the icebreaker for management seminars I ran for these guys. Uh, we are going to stop now, moderator. Give me five more minutes. And these are the hotel companies we dealt with. But what I'm going to say is every company, I did a training program for Atkin Spence, Hapu, I mean, Hapu invited me, all their vice presidents, all their GMs. And he sat through the class for two, two days. But to make that happen, I had to analyze Hapu's personality and understand where he's coming from and make him uh, happy. Okay, now, of course, I don't know a lot of money, but uh, I do some volunteer work, which is actually uh, has become purpose of my life these days. Uh, but these two forums we started in the last two years. Uh, today, we have 8,450 members. I don't know the personality of all those 8,450 members from 118 countries, but I know the personalities of the 101 volunteers like Samanthi Dimen, who are doing some splendid work and I try to use that. Some of them, I never met them. I know them socially, uh, uh, social media. But the way they message us, they uh, post, communicate by emails or whatever, I make a decision what personality they have, how busy they are, what are the things I can get them to do. So this concept also helps in not-for-profit. And then you have already answered this. Uh, I have a bonus for you. Uh, if you can make a note of this uh, website, if you go there, there's a section called free bonuses. Just go there. You can download things, five things free. This is totally free. Just, just go there and use it. The, this is something I did in the last seven months to uh, uh, when I'm undergoing this depression period. So it's a book of, uh, I think I spoke to you about this. It has 55 poems, 55 paintings. But if you go to the website, you can get free, don't buy the book, but just download the free stuff and uh, enjoy. It's my 22nd or 22nd book. So thank you very much. I don't think we have much time for questions and answers, but uh, if you have, I'll hand over to the moderator. He can deal with the questions and answers. Thank you very much. Sorry for spending 11 minutes more. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Chandi, for your contribution and insights on these five sessions regarding world-based practices. 
So today we have discussed about the understanding people and learn to analyze personalities to become successful in hospitality industry. Through this webinar series, we have we have learned understanding people certainly impact our ability to communicate with others. We know how to differentiate personalities to work with softies, toughies, confuses, perfecties, and complexes. And we should know now uh, to work with how to work with these personalities. So today we have Professor Dr. Suranga B. Silva, founding coordinator, Master in Tourism, Economics, and Hospitality Management, University of Colombo. So I cordially invite him to address the gathering. Professor, oh, how are you? <laughs> how are you, my dear Professor? Uh, I think it's my responsibility to thank you and acknowledge your great contribution. Um, I have been uh, actually getting some uh, recorded version of your lectures, so insightful and so valuable. Today, let I realize that uh, <clears throat> how much you are valuable for Sri Lankan industry, tourism industry. So you have an immense experience and you have shown your great uh, caliber, and I think. Uh, Last two, three years, we missed your valuable contributions. But this year, we have capitalized the uh, maximum we could get. But I know that this is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you have got that experience and uh, valuable knowledge. Uh, Rosh Chandi, I'm very sincerely grateful to you. My students are very happy and they are making every student are telling that your lectures are very useful and very instrumental for their development. And uh, I must be sincerely thankful to uh, my students as well, but I want to tell you, Chanti, I am very, very, very sincerely grateful to you. And uh, what do you think about our students? Uh, what is your ra ranking? And uh, tell us about uh, something to your... It's a people. good group. It's a mixed group. And uh, they, uh, I think there was a little bit of culture shock initially because I was really, I told them, I apologize for pushing them. Because yeah. the pandemic and the Russian war and all that, you know, with some five minutes late, ten minutes there, as you know, we start on the dot. You know, I know, I know, we have a lot of difficulties in Sri Lanka, but I did it purposely because I was trying to cover ten articles, but I have to cover thirteen articles, lot of things. Uh, next day, if I'm doing this, I, I think I need more time. You know, so yeah. to, to go into depth. Yeah. Um, but uh, they got used to it very quickly. I think first day was a bit of a culture shock. Uh, but I did it purposely to show, I tried to bring so many stories from around the world, but the essence was they're all case studies, but you have to pick at least 10% of those and see how can I use this in my career in 2023. So yeah. use all. So I think they got used to the rhythm. Uh, I think today I'm very happy and some of the students who were not, uh, who, with whom I was not very impressed on the first day, did very well. I gave them full marks today because they have they have blossomed in during these five weeks. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, our students are very attractive for your participation. And uh, I individually in my, interview my students, and I they go to okay, your contribution for their knowledge and as well is so valuable. And uh, what is our next process? And they will tell me about if you have any plan to come to Sri Lanka. Then I actually got from. Gayatri, that you have plan, uh, you have a plan to come to Sri Lanka in. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm planning to bring my two kids. You know, as you know, my wife passed away seven months yes. ago. So, uh, my kids, uh, they are very close to me, and I want to travel with them. Uh, mm -hmm. And and they're 19 and 22. Uh, so uh, we are thinking of spending a, a month in Sri Lanka this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I have, uh, I have a con that conference is happening. I think in October. Uh, and before that, I have two big, uh, I, I, I teach and uh, direct bridge. I, I'm, I'm tournament chair for two big tournaments here uh, okay. in uh, June and August. So I had to find the time in between. Uh, so, but I'm trying, uh, I'm also trying to fit into my, my son's Canada. He's 19, he's in the university. More than studies, he plays soccer for the university team. Okay. So I'm trying my best to come. If everything goes well, I think month of July. Uh, July, yes. Pandemic permitting, uh, I can come. Uh, and uh, what we can do, you and I can have a chat over Facebook uh, one of these days. You let me know when you're free. I know you're very busy. We can talk I'm about proud. what we can do for the future. 
Dr. Chandi, I have communicated through WhatsApp, but you don't read the WhatsApp. That's the reason. I, I read WhatsApp, but uh, the Facebook uh, message is easier for me. You know, like yeah, you... Actually, my phone, I can't get a Facebook message, but on the computer, I can get the post Facebook message. Oh, really? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. You send me a you, uh, WhatsApp. I mean, I check WhatsApp, but let me know what's the best time for you so we can have a chat. One thing yeah. I can do is that if you're interested, they they started reading my column. They're all old stories, but yeah. I think they 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 today the one girl rank out of the thirteen papers, the mm -hmm. most useful three papers for that student. Uh, two okay. are from that column, uh, the, the confessions uh, column. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the, those are lessons, and what I can do is. Because I do that anyway. Every week I'm writing an article. Each article is about 3,000 words. And I'll do it for another one and a half years. So if there's a possibility, I can do a weekly webinar related to that particular one and then bring the theories related to that. You know, we can talk about it. You and I will let right, me know. Right, right. Now, uh, now, Dr. Chandi, now uh, you communicate only master's batch. It's the master's 2020 batch, uh, 2021 batch. And yeah. uh, now we have postgraduate uh, diploma and uh, diploma students. So I would like to invite you for a guest lecture for our uh, our those two group as well. Uh, sure. So let, let's talk. Uh, I mean, not with all of them. You and I can have a talk. Uh, you send me an email saying what would be a good time, and then we'll connect either WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever. We'll have a chat. And okay. I, I'm there to I'm there to help you. And so uh, I, need good, I need a good coordinator like Gaya. You Gaya, have Gaya, Gaya, Gaya. Gaya. I need someone Gaya. like Gaya to coordinate, then it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So Gaya is very excellent in coordinating because that is why she has been appointed as a lead of the global best practices module. So oh. uh, I must be sincere thanks to Gaya. Gaya is there. Gayatri, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. I'm here. I'm uh, sorry. And uh, Danushi and Anushka and uh, uh, the other people, yeah, those who have done, uh, uh, what are, who are the other people? Uh, Ishara and Himasha. Himasha and? Ishara. Ishara, I, I must, I'm sincerely thankful to you organizing this event and uh, this lecture series and making a very good uh, comparing and moderating. I think our students have learned a lot from you, Professor. <coughs> Why? Because uh, we have realized that uh, your vast knowledge and how you manage that knowledge and how you disseminate that knowledge is to be learned by all, almost all the lectures in Sri Lanka. And uh, how you get the attraction from the student by making some compulsory reading and, uh, and involvement of them is very, very strategic. And I will send you the marks for all of them to, uh, to, uh, tomorrow morning. Now, this is about one one third in the morning for me. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow I will uh, compile the marks. Everybody okay. will be marked out of 50. I will send you the marks. And uh, I would like to request you send me a, a question, uh, at least five questions uh, out of the lectures we have done, then I will let uh, those five questions for the final examination of the students. And, sure. uh, so that is very, very important because student participation uh, will be checked uh, from the question how they are writing. I will, uh, if there is a possibility of uh, sending the uh, the electronic version of the answer script, I will send you uh, because uh, most probably this time uh, we will have the examination on-site examinations. Uh, but but, uh, but Suranga, they yeah. they already did the exam. My type of exam, I gave them eighty questions, so they okay. have to come prepared for all the questions. Okay. The first one hour, I have given them marks for their presentation of those. Okay. They came. So, uh, because I, I knew I don't have too much time to mark papers and all that. Yeah, I agree, yes. Because I, uh, I stopped teaching in 2007 now when I became a dean. So, I did so many other things after that. So, uh, uh, marking papers, I really don't think I have a lot of time. But I can give marks out of 50 for what they have oh, done right. in the classroom. You send it to me, those marks, then, then I will account it. I will account sure. those marks. 50 I'll give out Very good. Okay. Very good, excellent. And uh, I would like to ask one of our students, Gaya, Gayatri, we call Gayatri, but you did large word Gaya, right? Okay, Gaya, okay. I would like to see your valuable uh, appreciation of Professor Chandi. Uh, Gaya is a special character. I see he has been um, doing a very fabulous and uh, very attractive contribution for Sri Lanka tourism. 
one day we can see she will be one of the great lead of Sri Lanka tourism uh, make it a landmark right thank you guy you can uh, explain uh, about uh, you can appreciate as a student okay what contribution Dr. Chandi has done yeah thank you professor actually uh, these five days it's been like a wonderful journey for all of us so uh, actually at a one point i was wondering how much a one person can carry all of experience yeah. and at a one point i was really surprised that can an individual carry a lot of knowledge and experience in a one particular person actually i was surprised uh, dr sandi actually uh, this was not like a typical lecture that we are always having and i must guarantee and i am I'm saying my uh, colleagues at a one word. So they were so impressed the way you delivered it. We all were like, I think we never fall asleep or we were really excited because we never know like what you're going to ask us fr from next. So, and the questions, everybody were so much of excited to come to lectures tomorrow because you have been given a lot of questions for all of us. Yeah. But uh, thank you for giving us also because we were live in your lecture. So thank you very much. And in a word, if I say you are an encyclopedia, you gather a lot of information. So thank you very much for your valuable time. And uh, I know it's very late. You spend us, you yeah. spend a lot of time, like you didn't sleep, that you sacrificed for all of us. So I would like to really appreciate your time, knowledge, and your insight for all of us. So we are looking forward to see you in Sri Lanka in the middle of this year. So thank you, Dr. Chandi. And also, if I didn't thank our professor, I think it's going to be a uh, missing part here. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saranga, for organizing and giving this immense um, opportunity for all of us. Thank you so much. I want to add uh, something to uh, Dr. Chandi before we are leaving. Okay, you are my brother, and we work together, and we develop our relationship. We had a fight, and we had a debate, and everything because of uh, communication problem. So understand that uh, we have no light sometimes. I came to University of Colombo because I know that uh, if I miss you in uh, communicate at the last lecture, it's not fair enough. Uh, so then I forget to my uh, poor uh, difficulties. I came to Columbia University having a very little poor to meet you and uh, to see you and okay, you my great uh, gratitude for your great contributions. At the same time, I would like to request you, okay, there are 19 students doing the masters with this batch. If you can uh, start uh, developing a book or something publication based on their master research, uh, it would be a great contribution. It will be a great start for us. So think about uh, at least five, six uh, best master thesis for the uh, basic uh, finding can be incorporated under one thing. Uh, okay, best practice, uh, global best practices. So therefore, I think uh, you have been writing now new book also. So therefore, our students, uh, uh, if you can get, uh, if you can provide some, uh, that type of direction for our students would be very valuable and very, very useful for uh, them because they are going to be a leader of tourism industry in the near future. Okay. Okay, my brother, thank you very much, and I thank you for inviting me. Have a good night, and I'm going to, okay, let, let's students get ready to acknowledge Professor Chandi when he comes to Sri Lanka, and we will invite him to Columbia University. I will develop a special certificate for appreciation yeah. and uh, refreshment uh, with your family members, right? <laughs> okay, my brother, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Have a nice... We'll have a chat. We'll have one-on-one okay. -on -one chat there. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Bye. All Thank, the best. You Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you for moderating. Good night. Good night.